Yes. Oh. So I am Waifu, and you guys are? I'm Maxi Lopes. I'm an Eternal Enigma. I am Wolf DNZ. And this is going to be Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. Um, just one quick thing I just want to go over real quick. First, if you don't know this game, this is Devil May Cry 3. It's a game all about killing demons stylishly. And because of that, we're going to have a bunch of different styles to choose from at the beginning of the game. But during the run, we're only going to use one style and just focus on that the whole time. That's going to be Royal Garden. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and go to start the game. Uh, what costume won the bid war? Shirtless Dante has won the bid oh, war. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, of course it did. Dope. The best Dante, oh, yeah. obviously. We go. There, look at them. Shirtless Dante. Look at Dante. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, that's going to start now time. And I'm going to go ahead and select that style. And I'm going to try to explain a little bit about what exactly you do with Royal Guard in this game. Basically, uh, this fighting style allows you to block and parry attacks like that. Um, time. Time, time. Start. Yeah. time start. So yeah. that was a perfectly go. timed gold release. Um, it's a three frame window trick. You only have three frames or it, the game runs at 60 FPS, so one like a 20th of a second to do the inputs for that. Um, and basically, it's just a perfect counter. It does a ton of damage if you time it right. Um, you're also able to block attacks, which you'll see me do mostly in the second mission, after I do a bunch of Ooh, releases that like perfect. that. Nice. Um, every single release I do like that saves a bunch of time because it instantly kills the base enemies and does tons of damage to the other enemies. Um, this game is, the whole run is based around Royal Guard because it just does like an insane amount of damage per second, like DPS, to pretty much everything in the game. Uh, nothing resists it, and it's awesome because it's really skill-based. It's just a hard timing thing to do, and you have to learn timings for every attack in the game. And just like that, that's mission one. And we should get an S rank. Um, we should. Yeah, we should. Sure. At the end of every mission, you're given a rank and given bonus currencies. Yeah, there we go. Got the S rank. Nice. nice. Um, in this game, thankfully, it's not very stringent upon your ranks. It doesn't really matter. You just really want to get an S rank for the first two missions. Nice release. Because that'll let you buy Stinger. Uh, which is the thing that we use for movement tech early on. And that'll let you buy it early. It just saves a little bit of time. So here in a second, you're going to see me do my first perfect block, hopefully. Um, you'll see a big shiny and a ting, and that's how you know I block something perfectly. You can block literally everything in this game, um, including explosions, which is what hopefully you'll see here after I kill this dude. And if you look at the top left by my health bar, there it was. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. The, the top tank. left by my health bar, there is a couple of balls. And they will glow the more I build up my rage meter, which increases when I block more attacks successfully, like that perfect block. Um, that charges up your release. So the more I have stored, the more damage it'll do when I release. And that release can do an absolute ton of damage, like you'll see here, which is a little bit of charge. And that'll level up over the course of the run so we can do even more damage. Um, there we go. A ton of damage like that. And then this should be the end of mission two. Hopefully we get the S rank. I did take a quite a bit of damage. But if not, it's not a big deal. We just gotta walk it out and uh, go slow for a little bit. Um, maybe, yeah, I got an A rank. Uh, maybe you guys wanna explain the difference between gold and yellow, if you know? Oh, for the orbs? Yeah, between the selection. Oh, so you have the gold orb that lets you revive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can use the gold orb to revive in-game. Uh, yeah, and the gold orb lets you revive on the spot. Like right where you were. Yeah, yeah. In The yellow one, you just start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, because if you select yellow, at the beginning I selected gold, mm -hmm. and that's because we want to do a death warp later on. If you die on gold, you have to start the whole mission over again. Yeah. So the run is done on uh, gold instead of yellow. Mm -hmm. um, Yellow would be like something more akin to like Devil May Cry 1. That's yeah. how that game works. And in this game, we introduced uh, gold. So here, I'm going to be doing com something called shotgun canceling. Basically, Royal Guard also lets you do another thing that increases your DPS. It lets you cancel animations. Since you're supposed to be, um, block be able to block with quick reactions, it lets you just cancel pretty much every animation in the game. So what we can do is we can abuse that 
to cancel the recovery animation of the shotgun and shoot the shotgun really, really fast, way faster than we're supposed to be able to. And I'm doing this by like shooting, then blocking, then shooting, then blocking really, really fast back and forth. Um, and I'm also doing that if you ever see me do just two slashes instead of three for my main combo, that's because I'm interrupting that combo with the block. Uh, that's how most of the damage is going to be done in this game until we get some more weapons and some better ones for aerial combat. And that mechanic is very similar to how Devil May Cry 1 uh, quick slashes work, but in this game, because of Royal Guard, it lets you just cancel a bunch of other things as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot more going on in this game than Devil May Cry 1. Yeah, this, the game is very input heavy and super mechanically dense, which makes it a really yes. fun run. Mm -hmm. And there's not that much uh, RNG as well. There's also more going on than Devil May Cry 2. In <laughs> oh, yeah. like about every category. That. By the way, it's about out on the Switch. That. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Severus, uh, a lot of people's first and last uh, boss that they fight in this game, especially with the original port of this game being extremely hard. If you guys want to talk about that why I fight this boss. So in the original, yes. uh, every single mode from normal up wasn't exactly what it was supposed to be. Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> the, uh, there was kind of a mis uh, bit of a misconception of what the hard difficulty was supposed to be. And instead, it's, it's like super hard difficulty. Yeah, the normal difficulty was actually the hard difficulty. So a lot of people's first playthroughs were played on a harder difficulty that you're yeah, not supposed yeah, to play yeah. on on your first playthrough. And I bought this game the day it came yeah. out in March 2005. <laughs> That's a good fight. And I played this boss, and it felt like final boss. I thought the game was <laughs> yeah. over, yep. but it wasn't. Yeah, and a lot of people gave up because then. That's why they ended up releasing a special edition later on that added a bunch of new content. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it came out at the end of 2005, like just a few months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the first big uh, scary part of the run because that is like one of the only bosses that has quite a bit of RNG. Like the attacks that he's going to give you are quite random and as you saw I knocked him over and it just let me do a bunch of free damage. That's totally random. It, it, oh. I just got lucky and he let me do it. So that was good. Also, you can slide on enemies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I guess you, you, yeah, yeah, I guess you want to one point. Like, hey, what are these enemies called? They're called Enigmas. The Enigmas! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> most, no, not the most annoying enemy in the game. There's a lot of annoying enemies in the game. Uh, I would say for ranged attacks, these, oh, yeah, these ones are pretty sure. annoying, yeah. No, oh, yeah, they're very annoying. So, story-wise, we are... Dante, who is going to the top of this tower to fight his brother in the rain, of course, with big swords. Very anime. Um, it's pretty great. And we're just working our way there at this point. We're not really knowing what's going on. Oh. And, and like all of the other Devil May Cry games before it, it, it does use a lot of uh, puzzles and backtracking. Because mm -hmm. kind of, the kind original of the Devil May Cry was... Yeah came from the same development cycle of Resident Evil. Right. So it has a lot of carryover from stuff like that. So you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of similar puzzles and stuff. So here, when I'm beating up the switch to turn on the elevator, you see me do something called switch canceling. Mm -hmm. I was doing that a little bit before. Um, it basically works the same way as slash canceling or roll guard canceling or shotgun canceling. Um, basically, I'm canceling the recovery animation of my swing by switching to another weapon and starting an attack with that. And that does even more damage than um, canceling with blocks, so we're going to be doing that from now on. Unfortunately, the weapon we're doing it with now is like really bad for that, so it's not that much better, and each weapon has its own timings for that. Uh, so you're going to see here, there's, I'm hugging this door because I can do stuff like that. Um, the door actually attacks you in these games. Uh, that's like a staple from Devil May Cry. But since we have Royal Guard, um, every time we block the door, we get more powerful. So we want to hug the door as much as possible to try to get it to attack us and then counter it over and over again to do much damage. And then once the door's gone, you're at the exit, so it's just faster overall. Are you also using a stinger into Royal Guard cancel as well? Yeah, also, yeah. I'm canceling my stingers with Royal Guard to go faster with that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that when you go into boss fights that you have a certain amount of charge on your Royal Guard or your Rage Meter. Um, for example, I need to get a two cycle in next room on this boss, so I need at least a little bit of release. So I'm going to get a block on that guy and then not use it yet until the boss fight. Um, this boss fight is really annoying. Um, 
the first two cycles are <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this boss fight is yeah. The first two cycles are always fixed. He's always going to come out of the same places. But if you miss the two cycle, it's totally random which hole he comes out of in this room, and you just gotta gotta go with it. Ray, yeah. Okay, here we go. Massive damage. A lot of damage. Yeah, that's massive damage. Almost there. Ooh. That, that was beautiful. There yep. we go. That was well a done. beautiful fight. And so, like I said, it's not like Devil May Cry 1 or something with the speedrun where you need to worry about ranks. Um, it's actually kind of nice. The money route in this game is super lax, so you don't really have to worry about not having enough orbs for anything. Because uh, we don't really buy anything. The only thing we buy skill-wise is Stinger, which we already bought, and then we buy a couple items like way, way, way later on. And other than that, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, this game is less strict when it comes to its routing, but it's strict on its execution. So that's kind of the give and take when it comes to Double May Cry 1 and, and 2 yeah. as, as opposed to 3. So these are Blood Goyles. They're super annoying. That attack that he's trying to do there, they split in half. And I have no idea what the limit is, but they can just split in half and fill the room with enemies, which is really, really, really slow. And here's our bonus boss fight in the special edition. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is not in the original Devil May Cry. He has very good dialogue. Oh, that is what dialogue. the something is. <laughs> <laughs> and he bleeds confetti. Can't beat that. He's the best character in the game, pretty much. 100%. It really is. Yeah, so this is special edition only. This boss wasn't in the game in the original edition. Um, you can actually fight him three different times in the special edition, but thankfully this is the only one that's mandatory because all the fights are very similar. So this was a really good RNG on his patterns because I got a pattern where I could get guard off of his attacks while just wailing on him and then use it in his off phase. So that was perfect RNG. I didn't know you could stinger jump there. Okay. Well, that was, you do. That was interesting. Yeah. This, people, this uh, part of the game got a lot of people lost and confused as well. Because um, this game features one of those things where you have to like look at the dialogue and the text in the game and figure out where to go. It doesn't just like show you. Imagine that. I know, right? <laughs> oh. So now we got our Resident Evil-esque key item that we have to go and put it into another Resident Evil-esque key item hole. Like surf to the door. Amazing. And then we can go to uh, a really interesting boss. Um, very Ninja Gaiden-esque boss. It's Agni Arudra. We're going to be fighting two bosses at the same time, essentially. And if we kill them too slow or separate from each other, they'll actually combine. Yeah. And there's a 20-second unskippable cutscene, and he gets a lot harder to fight. Yep. So hopefully that doesn't happen. It, sh it shouldn't. What a stylish animation to get up with your ground. Those are stinger jumps. Is that a beautiful thing to see? <laughs> yeah. Um, if you stinger at a ledge, you can jump and fly across it. Mm -hmm. And that saves a bunch of time in, a cer in certain spots. But unfortunately, it's really hard to stinger a direction when there's a bunch of enemies in the room. So that you can beautiful. technically do something called a reverse stinger where you just buffer the input and stinger the opposite direction, but it's like really, really, really hard. Yeah. So it's not even worth like trying to do. Like even rec Record Holder doesn't do it. So here we got the Capcom Classic Elevator. They try to put it in like every single one of their games, I swear. They love the elevator. Yeah. You uh, go up and it's really bad at being an elevator. So <laughs> if there's too many things on it, it goes down it again. Just loses. Oh, I used to hate that secret mission with this. Oh, yeah. There's a secret yeah. mission where everything is like really tanky yep. and it's basically mm -hmm. just this elevator. But uh, we're going to just kill all these enemies at once to raise our style meter on the right. And the higher your style when you kill enemies, the more orbs are dropped. So it's important for the orb route sometimes that you have a high style when you kill some enemies. Oh! oh. Yeah, okay, I, I, I called it. I knew this was going to happen. Because <laughs> every time I want a good pace, I fall off the elevator. Like every single time. It's the nature of the elevator. Yeah, Go every again. time. Go again. He's Capcom hates me. 
and the elevators. That's where I lose my it's friends. It's just a trade-off for floor. that perfect RNG earlier. <laughs> oh, for sure. Capcom balancing yeah. the Furies. But uh, until the boss fight, this would be a great time for donations, if we have any. We got a bunch. We have Ooh. $200 from Madeline170. The chat has to become way more cute. Also, good luck, waifu. <laughs> We have $50 from Mr. Harvey. Good luck to Waifu, a great runner of the Devil May Cry, Resident Evil, and Scooby-Doo series, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sure you put that in there. I knew it would come up. Glad to see this money go towards a great cause. Okay. Remember to grab the health so I don't die. Uh, if I do die, it's not a huge deal because this game actually has the dynamic difficulty in it. So it'll just be way easier. But uh, yeah, here's the fight. Basically, what we're going to do is just shotgun cancel. And we want to release and parry these guys' attacks. But I want to do it bad on purpose. Wow, this camera angle is terrible. I want to do it bad on purpose, because if I do it per perfectly, I'll zoom through them like that. But I don't want to do that, because I want to stay in front of them. Because if you parry them twice or just knock their weapons back, then they will just fling their weapons out, and it got straight. This fight's hard. Like that. There goes Ron. And it gives you a bunch of free time to wail on them. Now this is the part where you really got to track their health. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. So we finished the one. Gotta now you have, kill a, the you have a small window to, to kill the other one before they... Oh, nice. There we go. There we go. That fight's really hard. You, you have to manage both of them at the same time, and if they die one at a time and mm -hmm. get away, then they the, will, they, they, the other yeah. one will power up, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it becomes a bad time. Mm -hmm. And the camera, as you saw, didn't like me there, so it wouldn't show me the fight. <laughs> and somehow I got an S rank, but that'll help with the orb route later. Okay, and now we got uh, them as weapons, actually. We take their heads and a lot of people's favorite weapons in the game, Agni and Rudra. Uh, we're going to equip them now, but we're not going to use them for a little bit. Uh, they are really good for another type of weapon canceling that we haven't done yet, called jump canceling. And we're using them a, a lot in Mission 7, which is the next mission, which is one of the hardest missions in the game, in my opinion. But for this mission, we just have to do two of three trials to get um, open the path. And if we do all three, we get a really, really good weapon called Artemis that everyone likes. Oh, yeah. It's super good. Super great. Mm -hmm. The game feels bad later on and even tries to give it us for free. <laughs> we still don't pick it up. It's so nah. bad. Kind of reminds me of what they did with Nightmare in uh, D the, the first one. one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm pretty sure it's inspired off the same gun because they work very similarly, which yeah, means they they're did. both bad, Yeah. unfortunately. So that's just a trial of like agility or whatever. And this is the trial of wisdom, which means I have to deep, dig deep into my galaxy brain and remember the combination of the maze. <laughs> the secret missions here are, are really fun too. Oh yeah. Stay in the air for 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> oh. one's hard. That one's great. Wow. That's like the a lot of fun. But yeah, now we got both of them. This is like one of the shortest missions in the game. We got both of them. And we're just gonna say goodbye to Artemis. We're not gonna get you and save you. Oh. Uh, but that'll be the end of the mission. And then we'll be introduced to jump canceling. Uh, jump canceling is very similar to switch canceling or guard canceling, but instead of switching or guarding, you jump. I know, difficult to grasp, but um, and every enemy in the game has a hitbox on their head that you can jump off of. And if you jump off of that hitbox while you're doing an attack, it interrupts the attack. And you could just loop this forever. The problem with this is that it's often really hard to consistently jump on an enemy's head over and over again while doing an attacks, um, especially with Agni and Rudra's aerial attack. But the upside is you can attack even faster than switch canceling or slash canceling. Um, and aerial attacks tend to do a lot of damage because you're only supposed to be able to do them every once in a while. So Especially Agni and Rudra. Yeah, especially Agni and Rudra does a whole lot of damage and a lot of knockback as well. So you don't have to buy that one, right? I think on the no. four. No, in four and four I think even five, five you yeah. have to buy uh, jump canceling. But it's just a thing in this game, fortunately. Really cool mechanic. 
It's also, it's also a thing in one, but it's like really finicky. In this game, it's it's actually something you can Useful. utilize yeah, in the run. Especially with Beowulf. Like yeah, Be damage. Beowulf is a weapon we're going to get much, much later yeah. on. And jump canceling with Beowulf is like the easiest attack. Way easier. So these are the enemies that we're jump canceling. See, if I go too fast, I'll start flying over their heads, and that's not good because I'm not doing damage. But it's important that I do at least somewhat good because these enemies spawn more enemies. So if I'm slow killing these guys, then there's more enemies I gotta kill. Yeah, if those spirits that they're spawning hit the floor, that's when those other enemies spawn. In this room, it's not so bad since they're prides, which are really easy to kill. But in a room that we're gonna get later on, they're lusts, which have a lot more HP. So it's really bad if that happens. That was a really good room. That was, yeah, yeah that was perfect. Yeah. I got no extra spawns. Uh, they're also like probably the hardest enemy in the game to jump yeah. cancel because when they crouch to let out to the souls to bring more enemies in, their hitbox is really, really small. So if you do it too early, then you're flying in the air, not hitting them. If you do it too late, you land again, which is really slow. Yeah, and you have to do it on their back as well. Yeah, you Otherwise, can't you jump don't on do the damage. coffin. Yeah. Yeah, it just won't let you jump again on the coffin, unfortunately. But thankfully, they're only in Mission 7, but there's three rooms with them, so it's kind of a nightmare. And then we get to fight our brother in the rain with the big anime swords. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to make this easier, is weapon change as well, right? Yeah, it just yeah. It does more damage, and that's what they go off of. Mm -hmm. But this is the scary room because this one spawns Lusts, which have more HP, and they spawn at the beginning of the room, too. Really good jump cancels. And you'll see me going for releases and blocks that are probably kind of out there. That's because, like, it's just free to try, so it's there's no worry in, like, just trying to block and release stuff because sometimes you'll get it, and it's really cool. Something else to notice is also uh, the HP of your enemy is on the radical itself, right? Yeah, it's it's in the crosshair. This is a really good room. It's in the, the lock on targeting. Mm -hmm. So that's how I can know how much enemy HP is going to have left. I take that into consideration when I'm doing that. So that was, that was the hard room. That's good. Uh, there's one more room with those greeds, and then we never see them again for the rest of the game. Thank goodness. <laughs> They're stressful. <laughs> But then it just gets worse, you know. We gotta fight Virgil. And the strat for Virgil is basically just get good and hit your blocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this this game as a speedrun, it you know, it starts off with like a couple of road bump, like roadblocks, but as it progresses, it just gets harder and harder. Yeah. I'm flying. This room is also really annoying because there's these poles. And if you oh. if you jump and attack into the pole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that includes like when you're trying to jump cancel enemies. So you're like trying to jump cancel them, and if they just hug the pole, then you're just whoa, 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 and like you can't stop to like push them away from the pole. He's out of control. There we go. Good room. Some health. Try not to die to Virgil. So we got level two for Royal Guard after we fought Agni and Rudra. And that's really important for Royal Guard because um, at level one, you can only block and release on the ground. But with level two, you can do it in the air, which means you can buffer your invincibility frames from your jumping into a block, which means it, just, it basically just means it makes blocks way easier if you jump into them. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that for this fight, but it makes like a lot of other fights way easier. Oh, the micro has the best soundtrack ever. Yeah, this game's soundtrack is off the charts. Especially in these Virgil fights. A tradition carried on in a future game. And the one line that he has. Very nice. That was a good fight. Ah, there we go. Good fight. 
So that fight had kind of a lot going on. Um, if you've ever played like Kingdom Hearts or something, you would know about like a revenge meter. Basically, Virgil works the same way in this game. He um, he has a couple of stun cycles that you can meet, um, but those stun cycles are only met on stun, not damage. So it doesn't matter how much damage your attacks are doing, as long as they don't stun him too much, he'll just let you keep hitting him. So we do like a very precise set of inputs and attacks to do as much damage with the minimum amount of stun. Can and I can I just say it's always amused me that there's a school bus in the <laughs> Leviathan's <laughs> stomach. How did the school bus end up down? Oh, there we go. It's magic the hard part. Are you, are you saying the magical go. school bus was on its way to an adventure and just it yeah. might be it's very mad nipped out of the air? They grabbed the traffic light too, so. So we also, since we beat Virgil there, um, we actually lost in the plot. Oops. But um, <laughs> we, he unlocks our true power, our devil trigger. Um, and that's those little runes underneath my health. Um, basically what that does is it makes you do more damage, take less damage, have more damage resistance. You heal while you're in devil trigger. Um, it's basically just god mode. Um, and that charges by taking damage or doing damage or fortunately for us, guarding and releasing. Guarding and releasing with Royal Guard give you a lot of Devil Trigger. So that in tandem with our guards like that just gives you a lot more. Um, and we're gonna use that, that's our primary resource besides our Rage Meter to do a ton of damage. Because if you thought we were doing a lot of damage with Royal Guard before, um, that's just multiplied when you have Devil Trigger active. So it's gonna do a lot of damage and help us meet a bunch of boss cycles later on. So that's why you bought the uh, purple orbs in the store, right? Yeah, that's the first and pretty much last thing we're gonna buy for a while is those purple orbs to increase our maximum devil trigger. And here I'm doing something that not a lot of people know you can even do. It's called devil trigger explosions. It's exclusive to this game. It's not in any of the other Devil May Cry games for some reason. Um, basically, I'm letting my devil trigger charge up by holding the button. And then once I have more than three bonus Devil Trigger stocks, I let go. And it releases all of it at once and does a ton of damage. Um, and that I was using that to insta-kill the enemies in the room. So some enemies are um, immune to that or don't take as much damage from that. And some, it does a ton of damage. Uh, for example, the one that we're about to fight, the boss of this mission, takes a ton of damage from Devil Trigger Explosions. This camera effect is super groovy. So is the music, dude. <laughs> That's what I was saying, all the music in this game. This game's full yeah. of bangers, dude. Amazing. And Devil May Cry 5 followed suit. Also, the whole, all the games are full of bangers. Even, even Devil May Cry 2. Devil May Cry 2 is the worst game ever made. Music, yeah. has great music. So here I routed it perfectly so that I would have just enough to buy another purple orb because that's going to refill my devil trigger when I get here. And that's the last one we're going to buy for the game. So this fight, we can get a one cycle. Um, it's really hard. I'm going to go for it maybe. Do if it. it's like too scary, I won't, but we'll see. Nah, probably not going to get it. He's probably not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I figured the that would lasers. happen. Yeah. It's really easy to get stuck on these enemies yeah. here because they don't stun. That's the gimmick for the enemies in this area is that they don't ever fall over or get knocked back. Yep. So they just will just walk at you forever. Keep coming, yep. Yeah. If I had these releases in the last try, I'd, I would have got the one cycle. But yeah, this boss is pretty simple. You just gotta kill the smaller organs, and then the heart will open up, and you can attack it. It's a really, uh, it's a really good example of the the release damage as well with that double trigger. Yeah, it does a whole bunch. And also, like I just did a normal release there, and it did a whole bunch of damage. But if you do a gold release off of an enemy's attack, which is what I was baiting for, I was trying to um, release off of the enemy's attack, and it does a ton more damage, like maybe twice as much. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> so this game, as I'm sure you've known if you've been watching so far, it doesn't have any really skips or anything. You basically are just going to the end and killing all the enemies as intended. 
There is one exception to this, and it's on this mission. Um, I'm going to go for it, but it is RNG-based. Basically, what it is, is it's a zip across the room. Um, I have to stay in a very specific spot and then hope that Enigma has good aim and can shoot me. <laughs> I'm going to uh, do my best. <laughs> yeah. If sometimes he just gives you really bad aim and just won't hit you. Because what we actually need to happen is I need to get hit so that I can gold release off of the arrow that he shoots at me and zip across the room with it. So those Agnes and Roger do more damage than those spiders. Yeah, there is elemental damage in this game, but it's like super minor. Uh, Agni and Roger does more damage to the spiders, and if you kill them with Agni and Roger, they don't drop babies. Mm -hmm. Always. Which is more important? Yeah, it's, it's more important just to go fast. Are you gonna go for the? Yeah, I'm gonna go for the zip. Let's we'll go. see if I get it. Okay, it's a homework. specific timing for this. Yeah. It's a, like I said earlier, it's a three frame trick. Let's try it one more time. Ah, I'll yeah. just, no, let's just go it. fast right. for it. But yeah, he has to hit you, which is obviously is RNG because his aim's yeah. really bad. And then you have to do a three frame trick off of that. So you only have one shot, really. Um, doesn't save too much time. I literally just went around. It's, but it's pretty cool. It looks yeah, really cool. Yeah. Try. yeah. And that's the only really that's the only opportunity to do it as well on the run. Yeah. yeah. There is nothing else like it in the game. But you just basically teleport there. But there's a lot of cool flashy stuff left to show off, so not too bummed. Hmm, maybe time for some donations? Yeah, it's a perfect time for donations. Yeah. I have a fifteen dollar donation from Rook. My ferrets are named Dante and Virgil, so they'll both get a treat if you get a perfect on Virgil too. I'll also take a gold release on a killer bee. Please earn my ferret's treats. <laughs> <laughs> we have $25 from Sequenza, aka Side Drooler. Been looking forward to Waifu wrecking some demons and Enigma just looking good in the couch. Let's go, gamer. <laughs> we have $15 from LJ Creeper. Hey, Waifu. Just wanted to wish you good luck on your run, and we're all rooting for you in the Discord. I do just want to check in really quickly on our bonus game one. Again, that is coming up after this one, as well as Super Mario World after that. We have raised about $400 since the start of Devil May Cry 3. We still have about $63, $6,400 to go. Again, you don't have a whole lot of time to get those donations in. All right, so the best, uh, the next boss coming up, what is your strat? So the next boss is Navon. Um, she is an electric bat lady. Um, and we're going to try to get a two cycle on her. Basically, she is a lot kind of like Separus. She has a phase where you can't really do any damage to her, and then you have to do as much damage as you can in a short window. Um, she'll, she'll, she'll let us attack her like a little. This, this man. He's got some blocking. <laughs> He's got Royal Guard, too. Okay. Basically, she's going to open us uh, an event, a time to attack her after I kill her bats. But I need to get some release off of her attacks first. Just like that. There we go. Yeah, and then I'm going to need to do as much damage as I possibly can while she's down. It's not quite in range for a two-cycle, but that's okay. Maybe? Ooh. Whoa! Oh, oh. Close. that two hits. Get ready. Love Nevin. Come here. There we nice. go. Good fight. Good fight. And then we got Navon, which is definitely the coolest thing I've ever seen in a video game. Is that the way you pronounce it? I, I I've always so. said Nevin. I always Nevin. said Nevin. I'm well. from Georgia, so I just <laughs> let the words fall out. Nevin. Yeah, well, it's an electric bat guitar that shoots bats <laughs> made of electricity. <laughs> it's really cool. Unfortunately, it's terrible, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's really fun. 
So uh, this is a great time for donations. It's more of a downtime mission. We have $5 from Life Coach Virgil. Stylish <laughs> moves. Stay motivated, my friend. We have a $25 anonymous donation. Happy to be able to donate for such a worthy cause. Keep on keeping on, y'all. We have $5 from Young Venus. A donation straight from Planet Venus. From your favorite Venusian Raptor, YV. Here to cheer on our man Waifu in his Devil May Cry run. Nice. I do want to give a quick shout out to one of our GDQ partners, The Yeti. The Yeti has been supporting Games Done Quick events since 2012. They are the official t-shirt sponsor for Games Done Quick, and you can get your official GDQ XTs and more at theyeti.com. And they did actually post all of their GDQ X merchandise on Twitter just this morning, so you can definitely check out their Twitter to take a look and see what they're offering. See what we're talking about with the reused areas? Just back and forth, back yeah. and forth. This game actually reuses a lot of its areas and its assets, but it does it in a really smart way it that does doesn't it in feel a, annoying. Yeah, it's, it, to me, like, Devil May Cry 4 was a little more, I don't know, it, straightforward. Least, straightforward with it. Yeah, it just, yeah. It's like, you're just going to go through all these areas again, but this is way more creative. Yeah. In um, my opinion. Basically what happens is you, like, fall off of the top of the tower when you get eaten by that giant leviathan thing. Yeah. And the tower shifted when a big event happened in a yeah. cutscene. So now you're going through everything again, but it's in a different order and it's very shifted. Do we remember the name of the tower? Uh, Temini Groove. Temini Groove. <laughs> As Arkham likes to say <laughs> so menacingly. So the mid-game for this game is really weird because a lot of it's kind of some downtime where you're just doing some missions that are mostly just like kill some spiders, go from point A to point B. But then it's also got like the hardest parts of the run. Like it's got um, the first Beowulf fight, which has like the single hardest thing in the whole game to do. And then it's also got the Garion fight, which is the time horse, um, which is like the easiest thing to choke in the whole game. So it's really punishing in the mid game, especially if you already have a good time. Um, that's where most runs make or break. And so, speaking of, now we're on mission 11, which is the mission with Beowulf. Um, he has this AOE attack that he does when he transforms. Um, and if you gold release it on a special part of his face, right on his eye, it can do a third of his health bar, maybe even more. It's like actually insane. So it takes a bunch of time if you get it. It's really cool, but it's also the hardest thing in the game. And if you miss it, you don't really have a second chance to do it. Um, except for the second time you fight him and Mission 18, like way later on. These enemies right here have a really uh, yeah. really weird gimmick to them. Yeah. yeah, this game is full of amazing enemy designs that should be <laughs> hailed from the heavens. And then also these enemies. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then also the dual hands. It, it's like straight 50-50 down the middle between like super awesome and like totally garbage. So like those enemies I was just fighting, you can't actually hit them if you're facing them, which all your attacks go the direction you're facing, so... And then there was the dual hand enemies earlier, where you can only hit them in the back, but they don't show their back ever. Enemies that you could never really combo, they're just more gimmick enemies. Thankfully, though, it seems the gimmick enemies don't really show up all that often. So. No, they're pretty few and far so they between. Kinda, I think they kind of knew. So it's yeah, like, oh, we'll like, give them a little bit, but not a whole lot. That was a great fight. That was a really good Well done. Really yeah. Those jump cancels at the beginning were really good. And then we're going to go on a bit of a gondola ride. It's pretty fun. Thankfully, it's not an oil scroller. Are we going to look at the clouds? No. <laughs> <it's not. laughs> Sky textures. 
Yeah, and also you're, you're going to see uh, a lot of Holy Water pickups. And in Devil May Cry 1, Holy Water is obviously extremely overpowered and pre pretty much used almost the entire time you're running the game. But in Devil May Cry 3, they made it so that Holy Water isn't as easily accessible. And if you do decide to buy some, it's going to cost a lot. So it's... Uh, it's something that you'll see Waifu pick up a bunch, but you're, he's not going to be using it for a little while. Yeah, we're only going to really use Holy Waters one time in the run, and it's like way later. Mm -hmm. Because there are some enemies that are really bad and not fun to fight, and there's also a boss that's really bad and not fun to fight. But that's not until like way, way later. So yeah, thankfully, like I said, this is not an auto-scroller. As soon as you kill all the enemies, it just ends. Um, and then we have the like one of the hardest fights in the game here, the hit wolf. So ideally, I jump cancel his eye and do a ton of damage. Then he's stunned, then he does an AoE, and then I release, and it does a bunch of damage, and he dies. But it almost never goes like that, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, God. that was it right there. I hope that can... Ah, dang. You can also, if you block his charge there and just keep him stunned in place the whole time, that's the ideal. But this isn't too bad. It's it's not a super hard fight, but you can make it a lot faster than it normally would be by doing that. But yeah, like sometimes you'll see like I do an attack and it just does way more damage. It's just because of the part of his face I'm attacking him in. It's like super particular. That was still pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah that was a good fight, still. Then we go from one really hard boss to one really easily choked boss. This one is the, the horse boss, but on the way there, we pick up an item that is going to give us infinite devil trigger, which is really cool. Um, really fast and, like, impossible to kill, except for it drains our HP, so we're dying really fast. Yep. Um, thankfully, all the enemies in this level drop a bunch of health. It's never really a problem. You're not really going to be in danger of dying. And it's pretty similar to a mission in Devil May Cry 1 where you pick up an item and you have to go put it in a slot and it sucks your health until, until you either put it in the slot or you just die. And uh, in this game, they just made it way more fun by giving you Devil Trigger. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly the same, but you have infinite Devil Trigger. It's really cool. Um, unfortunately, we don't really have any weapons that we're using at the moment that give us like special abilities with Devil Trigger. Like, Navon has some really cool stuff with Devil Trigger exclusive. Like, you can fly around and whatnot. But uh, this would be a great time for donations. I have a $25 donation from Z-Rat, who appears to be attempting to ping you, Waifu, from our donation tracker. Um, and says, at Waifu, don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone at Waifu in the chat now. <laughs> don't don't add Z-Rat, though. Uh, we have $50 from Tidemore. Struggling with Hell and Hell in DMC5 right now. Good luck with your run, though. <laughs> Good luck to you. That's a nightmare. We have $20 from Friatki. This DMC3 run is bringing back memories. I think I have to stay up a bit longer to see the end. We have $42 from Fini Kalthand. Finally, some GDQ again. Can't wait for the Super Ryu World 2 run. And speaking of that Super Ryu World 2 run, we are at just over $3,800 out of $10,000. Um, I don't think I mentioned this, but that run will actually be done by Ryu Car. It is a 100% run as well. So if you would like to see that, get your donations in for that. Because if you don't, and we don't need that incentive, that game ain't happening. So get your donations in. So we got one more room, and then that really annoying horse boss. Oh, I'm flying. We have $50 from Cheat117. 
first GDQ Live and my first TwitchCon. Thanks for the invite, Grav. Money goes to Ryu World. Come on, guys, let's see those donations. So to make these uh, jump cancels easier, do you have default controls? Do you switch them around? Uh, I play on default controls, but what I do is I use both thumbs on A and Y on the Xbox controller. I hold it really weird. I have to do like a bunch of weird stuff to run this game, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, so that was the second Jester fight there, but thankfully it's totally optional. Um, pretty cool fight, but it's not fun to do like three times. It's almost exactly the same. Yeah, so this is the horse. You might remember him from Dark Souls 2. <laughs> uh, he is really annoying. Uh, basically, ideally, we don't do this. Uh, <laughs> Were you standing on top of him? Yeah. On top of it. <laughs> Literally right in it. We, uh, you're supposed to do an aerial attack in his face to just stop him. And if we do it right, he'll just be stun locked in the center of the arena forever. Um, obviously, that's hard because you have to time it right. And yes, I just blocked fire. Easy. Easy. Nice. Ooh. Slow down. Slow down time. Oh, okay. oh, well, I got some nice blocks off. Hopefully I can... Again, I'm on the hot horse. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. Yeah, he gets faster the lower health he gets, so... Yeah, and he gets faster every subsequent charge that you don't stop him. So the timing isn't consistent across every attempt. That's why it's really difficult. annoying. That's why it's so difficult, really. Yeah. I, okay, I hit him there. Yeah, that should have hit him. There we go. There we go. Nice. Nice. Just, uh, saved it at the end there with a nice release. The mid game gets really hard. Uh, the next mission, we're also going to be fighting Virgil again. Um, he actually went and yoinked our weapon that we were going to get from beating Beowulf. Usually, every time you beat an uh, enemy in this game, or pretty much in any Devil May Cry game, you get a weapon from it. That's subverted in that mission where Virgil comes and kills him instead of you, and then he gets the weapon. Yeah, Beowulf like runs away, and then he sniffs Virgil, and he's like, wait a second, there's two of you. Yeah. Gets bamboozled. And it gets totally annihilated by Virgil in a cutscene, which is really cool. It's if, super anime. If you've never watched the cutscenes for this game, I strongly suggest that if you got like an hour and a half to kill, it's like some of the best stuff you'll ever see. Also, I think every cutscene has like the number of the mission in it, yes. right? Yes, every yeah. time. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere in there, the number of the mission is right there. And a lot of them were done, well, they were all done with motion capture, and there's footage out there of the, the cutscenes done in motion capture without the effects on them. Mm -hmm. Really cool. And that's actually a feature I think they added to Devil May Cry 5 where you could watch the cutscenes just in that raw motion data. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Especially the, uh, the van flip. Yeah. That's great. That whole game is great. True. Yeah, oh, yeah. play Devil May Cry 5. Great yeah. game. If you like this game, cool love Devil May Cry. Cool speedrun, too. Shout out to my homie, the Cosmic, who runs DMC5. The homie. And shout out to C. Mateus, who is like the god of this game. He made an entire tutorial that's like super in-depth, like the most in-depth tutorial I've ever seen for a speed game. Um, his time is like five minutes better than mine, and I run this game like every day. Yeah. He's just actually a god gamer. He's crazy. So this is Virgil 2. Um, basically, I need to do what I did last time, but a little bit harder. Listen to that soundtrack. Let me use a heal real quick, sir. <laughs> Hold on. Your yep. kicks are strong, dude. <laughs> Please, brother. Yep, no item quick use here. Got to go into the menu. You will 
Oh, I choked. Okay. So, I'm going to have to let him kill me here because he also goes into Devil Trigger. This is a perfect example of why you need to do the phase skip because he also goes into Devil Trigger. Um, yeah. And his Devil Trigger is like even stronger than ours. It has all the same properties as ours, but um, he goes into it once he reaches a certain amount of HP. Yeah, Virgil really amps up the second time around. His Devil Compared Trigger it, it also lasts longer as well, so you can't like out Devil Trigger him or anything like that. Man, I'm getting my butt kicked here. This is like one of the hardest fights in the game for sure. Yeah. I need to block. You guys have to be frame perfect, right? Yeah. Or close to it. But yeah, this this Virgil 2 is significantly more amped up than the first one. Okay, so hopefully I got there. Um, I did. Uh, the idea is you do so much damage that he skips his second phase and teleports to the center like that, yeah. Yeah. and it skips his double trigger entirely. But it's very precise, the timing on it. If you do just a little bit too much nice. damage, then he'll go double trigger and you're just totally screwed. Yeah, this game is very execution heavy. Mm -hmm. You gotta nail some of this stuff. This is where the game kind of <laughs> flips upside down. <laughs> yeah, it gets yeah. really wild. Oh, best weapon in the game right here. Yeah, this is this is the best weapon in the game, and we have to switch to it immediately to open a door. But we're just gonna keep it for the rest of the game, except for a very choice selection way later, because that part it's like way better to have Agni Ruja. But since it's so easy to jump cancel with Beowulf. Um, we're just going to keep it, because it does a ton of damage. Sick combo here to break the statue. They actually have to be stylish to open the door. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, that's the, the most stringent fight in the whole game. Um, you pretty much have no chance with this amount of health and doing of doing it fast if he goes into his devil trigger um and the final fight with virgil is also very similar but much more forgiving in my opinion because virgil with beowulf his attacks are really weirdly timed and since they're all on the ground you can't buffer your guards at all you just have to try to stand and guard them which is significantly harder than jumping and guarding these are the enemies you have to attack from the back yeah these are the dual hands Obviously, the oh. peak of enemy design. Yep. Okay, I guess I won't. Back on the wagon. Mm -hmm. This is the same uh, deal as last time, right? You just got to kill all the enemies. Yeah, as and fast as you just can. Teleport. But this time we can afford to go ahead and use our devil trigger, so we can ride it out to make this part really fast. Because earlier we needed it for the boss fight. And now the run is dive kick city. <laughs> Most of the common enemies we, that we fight in the game are just going to be jump canceling with Beowulf because it's just so powerful and it's really easy. Yeah, that kick does a lot of damage. Do your job. <laughs> yeah, um, basically what happens after we fight Virgil 2 there is it ends on a stalemate and then plot twist. The Jester was actually the bad guy the whole time. And then Lady shows up. Mm -hmm. And then he activates the tower and opens the gate to heck. <laughs> <laughs> which knocks everyone off of the tower, and we have to climb back up again. Is that it? These are some of the cooler designed enemies in the game. Um, there's actually a whole set of chess piece enemies. Um, one enemy type for each different chess piece on the chessboard. And then later on, we're actually going to fight a whole chessboard at the same time. On yeah. the chessboard. Yeah, it's really cool. They all have unique attacks as well. 
It's it's very well designed. Except for these horses. These horses suck. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> We got time for a donation? Yeah, go for it. We have $25 from Jeff the King. Holy cow, Ryu is at a GDQ? There's no way I'm not donating for that Super Ryu World run. Ryu is one of my favorite streamers, YouTube content creators. Here is $25 towards the cause. I owe it to him for making the best Super Mario Maker 2 level of all time, Hot Sponge. Love to all the runners and staff. What a name. Thank you. And we are just shy of $4,000 out of that $10,000 for that bonus game. Now, I know there are definitely a lot of Mario fans out there. So I want, I want to see you all. I mean, come on, donate for more Mario. We got some Link coming up for that. You just want Link to just come in here and take over your run? No, we want Mario. And as a reminder, all of your donations go directly towards Able Gamers, so that way more gamers can also experience Mario. So come on, Mario fans, let's get more Mario. And uh, this is going to be the end of Mission 14 and into the worst mission in the game, Mission 15. Uh, this game is like my favorite game ever, but I'm not allowed to. I'm not against saying it has flaws. This mission is definitely a flaw. Um, it starts off with a really cool cutscene really where you cool. actually uh, ride Lady's motorcycle up the side of the building and then use it as a weapon. Um, super cool. Actually, I'm pretty sure that inspired... Ooh, these enemies. I the, hate the these fallen. enemies. I'm pretty sure that inspired oh. the Cavalier in DMC5. Yeah, these enemies suck. They have no clip. They don't let you hit them. They don't aggro on you. And they can also clip into walls. Yeah, they can just phase through walls. And they're exactly like the uh, the Sin Scissors from DMC1. Yeah, so we just say no. I'm, I'm not going to fight you. I'm just going to holy water you. Yeah. Just get out of here. But yeah, mission 15, this mission sucks because um, this mission is supposed to be like a weird maze puzzle thing where you hit these levers, the switches, and they actually shift around um, the layout of the map here. Um, thankfully, it's consistent the same every time. Two, one, two, two. And like as we were speaking about earlier, like the, the game makes you go through all the same areas, but in a very creative way. This is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. The only problem with this one is if you know where you're going, it's pretty slow. That's the problem. There's not much going on. This would be a perfect time for donations. I have a $25 donation from Bad Scribbler. No comment on that donation, but I would encourage you to keep practicing so that way, that way one day you might be a good scribbler. And we did just pass that $4,000 mark on the bonus game Super Ryu World 2, the 100% run, which would be done by Ryu Car. So yeah, keep getting your donations in. Remember, every donation counts, no matter how big or how small. So what we're doing here is uh, hitting that so that rooms rotate. Yeah, the rooms are rotating when I'm hitting those, and that's going to set us up to skip, actually skip a cycle um, on the room rotation. Uh, normally, if you didn't know exactly what you were doing, you'd have to go through one extra room. But since we know where we're going, we don't have to do that. And right here, I'm going to be taking damage on perfect because I'm going to be setting up for a death warp. Um, there's only one death warp in the whole game. We mentioned it earlier when we were talking about gold versus yellow selection. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because in the speedrun, we never pick up a double jump or anything like that. So this room in particular is like super terrible to try to go back through. Um, so it's easier to just set up exactly how you need it. And then as soon as you pick up the key item, die, because it teleports you where you respawn is right in front of the door that you need to go to. So hopefully I don't die before I pick up the item, because that would be slow. But after I pick it up, then I want to die. Uh, let me through. Okay. <laughs> this room is pretty uh, 
bit scary. Yeah, especially like. Obviously, the fat, like the le less health you have when you come into the room, the faster it is. So if you're like doing PB attempts, sometimes I'll come to that room with like literally no HP, and it's super scary to try to run across the room. But I uh, think that is the end of the worst mission in the game. Just gotta ride the elevator. Oh, fun fact: the elevator earlier, if you dive kick in it, you soft lock. You just dive kick forever as the elevator goes up, and the cutscene never plays. It's pretty cool. That doesn't sound pretty cool. It's, it's not. It's, it's actually terrible. not cool at all. <laughs> no. That's the irony. Yeah. B emoji. It's stylish, though. <laughs> at least. Very stylish. Mission 16. Mission 16 is really more of the same. We just got this really cool puzzle here where you got to knock the balls into each other to get a key item. It's really innovative. <laughs> It's also kind of difficult the first time. Yeah. It is. It's not as it's not as easy as you'd think. Yeah. Like that made it. Obviously, look easy. obviously, yeah. Uh, Waifu's gonna make it look like not. super easy. I make it look easy until I mess it up and there's like 30 seconds of my PB here. <laughs> and here comes more fallen. And yeah. here they go. Oh, here they go. Goodbye. Yep. <laughs> they are seriously the most annoying enemy. That's the oh. holy water is being used there for a reason. Trust oh, me. Oh yeah. And then we got uh, our actual boss fight with Lady coming up here. So we need to make sure we have full Devil Trigger and full release when we go to that fight. But first we gotta make sure that these guys don't split apart and make a million enemies in this room. You come into this room like three different times in the run, I believe. It's like the most revisited room in the game. And every time you have to fight enemies and every time the enemy arrangement is different, it can be kind of confusing to remember which time you're going into the room. And then another puzzle where you hit a ball. It really feels like they're kind of running out of ideas in like these last couple missions, but then it really picks up in the end game. So it's totally worth it. Also, the secret missions, right? They reuse a lot. Mm. We don't do any in the speed run because they're not really necessary. Mm. But this game does have a lot of extra content, with secret missions and stuff. I think it's got 20. Yeah. Missions. Is it yeah. 20? It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. For sure. And you get blue orb fragments mm -hmm. for Which are basically completing them. So they'll, pieces. Yeah. They'll, uh, they'll increase your health bar. And the ones in this game are super hidden. Like, they're like, hidden yeah. really very yeah. well, yeah. And uh, Lady is going to be like one of the easiest bosses in the game, but it, we do have a really cool uh, like cycle skip. We're just going to not let her go anywhere and just get her stuck right where we are and keep her locked there um, because we'll do so much damage, just similar to Virgil 2. We'll do so much damage that we skip her phase where she runs away and skip her right back to a phase where she stays with us. Um, so she'll just get beat up a bit and then stuck. And hopefully uh, she won't give us the bad RNG and fly away. Hey, look, Artemis. <laughs> Bye, Artemis. Bye, Artemis. Yeah. Sorry. You're still really bad. Neglected. And there's Mission 5 on the wall there yeah, from the cutscene in Mission 5. Come on. Fighting in the library. Blocking bullets. Or trying to. There we go. She'll give you little verbal tells on All what right. she does. <laughs> Man. Ah, bad RNG. The fight, th this fight just seems like bullying. A little bit, yeah. GG's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really easy fight. And now you have her rocket launcher. Which is a really cool gun. It's unfortunate we don't use it at all on the run. It's kind of crazy how much longer that fight takes if you don't actually get that phase. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it takes a long time because she, she does this phase where she, like, jumps up on the rafters. And yeah. And she, like, lets you get, like, one hit in and then yeah. teleports away. There's the bad man. There he is. Yeah. 
So storyline recap, Virgil and Arkham are buddies in the beginning, but Arkham turns out to be super bad and turns on Virgil, and the person we just fought, Lady, is actually the daughter of Arkham. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to stop him too, mm -hmm. and we are fight facing the biggest enemy in any Devil May Cry speedrun right now. <laughs> Platform. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, platforming in Devil May Cry has always been a thing. It should never have been a thing. <laughs> it's like the worst part of any Devil but May Cry game. Especially the last secret mission. Yeah, uh. that room is like really, really hard actually. It just doesn't look like it because I did it really fast. But it can be really annoying. And there's actually a secret mission where you have to do that platforming. It's definitely built for you to have Trickster. But we yeah. don't have Trickster. So there's a really cool thing you can do here. Um, if you don't get perfect RNG like you never do, uh, you can actually gold release these spikes and zoom like right through them. If I get trapped, I might try it, but it's really hard. It's the three frame trick that you have to do like over and over again. So ideally you just be perfect and do three frame tricks all the way through. Yeah, just be perfect. Just be perfect, forehead. So here we introduce to a new enemy. Uh, I think they call it Biss. Really cool. They their their gimmick mechanic, whatever you want to call it, is that when they get knocked back, they will just immediately charge back into you, which makes them really good for Royal Guard, because you can just just charge them back and forth and uh, get a whole bunch of release off of them. And now we're gonna fight our doppelganger, which ah, yes. is a really easy fight, but you can get a nice little one cycle if you do your jump cancels really well, which I'm going to try to do. Back in the day, this was the mission I used to farm orbs on. It's a really good one for that. It's a good, it's a good farming chapter. Mm -hmm. And also, um, doppelganger, once you beat him, you get a style called doppelganger, which uh, lets you use your devil trigger to create a clone that attacks for you. Um, and Little known fact, like not a lot of people know, you can actually plug in a second controller, and the second controller controls the doppelganger. Yeah. So you can play co-op, like two players, through the whole game if you had a super costume for unlimited devil trigger. It's really cool. On mission 18, there's also a section where uh, you and Virgil fight the boss together. It also works there if you plug in a second controller. Mm -hmm. And your buddy can co-op Devil May Cry like you've always wanted to. So obviously the deal here is knocking the things up, making all the lights show up, and then you can just... Yep. Go to Pound Town. That was a really good one cycle. Very nice. Now, this is probably the coolest mission in the game, aesthetically and like in the run. It's really cool. This is mission 18. Um, it's got the Capcom classic boss rush. So we're going to have to fight a bunch of bosses that we already fought before. Yes. But this one's really cool because you don't actually have to fight all the bosses. Uh, there's like a board on a wall, and yep. every time you fight a boss and kill it, um, a piece of the board lights up, and all you have to do is make a circle on the board. So the minimum to do that is three, but obviously it's the three hardest bosses. Yep. And I think if you want to do all of them, was it like nine, I think? Seven or nine? Then you get a blue orb fragment, yeah. Yeah. It's either seven or nine. So here we got that chest board. Perfect chest. Nice. So you only have to kill the king, right? Yeah, just like real chest. You take out the king, it's all over. Um, I used the holy water there, but that was so that I could activate the king. If you don't do that, then he'll just remain dormant, and you can't damage him until you break a whole lot of other chest pieces. We ignore the fallen there. Yeah, no. Forget goodbye. that. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to go ahead and do the boss rush, and starting off with Severus. Like I said, Severus earlier is like one of the harder bosses in the game because you don't have anything with you. Like you have no devil trigger. You can't air guard. You don't have Agni Rudra. We're going to like totally annihilate him now that we have Agni Rudra and Devil Trigger. Because the aerial attack, it does extra elemental damage and you can hit like multiple heads at the same time with it. Yeah, massive damage with that aerial attack. Much, much easier. Way easier. There's a good audio music remix on this. It's kind of slowed down. Oh, yeah. I like it. There we go. Both versions are really good. Severus is the best track of the game, I think. So good. I think they did a remix for DMC5, right? Mm-hmm. 
So now we're going to fight nine. Agni and Ruger again. There are nine on there. Okay. Yeah. Bare Hopefully minimum three. Be that was That was pretty perfect. Nice. Yeah. If only I could shock it, cancel. We got time for a quick donation? Go for it. All right, we have an anonymous $25 donation with no comment. So instead, I'm going to insert my own comment about Super Mario World 2, which should be coming up after Super Mario World, but only if you get your donations and we, and we meet that $10,000 incentive. There's two. One more? Mm -hmm, one more. And this one's going to be Beowulf, the one with that super tricky release. So I have another chance to get it here. It'd be really cool if I did. There's a ton of damage. I hit it, but it didn't hit it. it didn't it's, work. it's so finicky. But that was better than last time. I did a lot of damage there. I released that nice. one. Nice. Still a really good fight. Yeah. And we got Royal Guard level 3, which is going to let us do even more damage with a Royal Guard. But unfortunately, it gives us like an optional move, like a, a backwards guard, that I only ever do on accident and doesn't really do anything. <laughs> that was a really good mission 18. Leads us to mission 19, the second to last mission in the game. This mission is like the gimmick mission. Yeah. Um, got some really neat stuff going on too, but also some really weird stuff. So I'm going to need to charge full double trigger and guard before I leave this room because the next room has an interesting gimmick that I don't think I've ever seen in a game before. But yeah, these enemies are perfect for farming guard because they just consistently will just charge back at you. <laughs> oh. Come on, come on. There's actually come a on. really cool setup. It doesn't really work too much in the speed run, but you can just, at the very beginning of the room, if you do a very specific attack, you can knock all of them back at once and then guard all three at the same time while taunting in between. Really cool. So this next room, there's going to be a bunch of mirrors, and one of them is, like, highlighted. Yeah, this one. That one. This is a one. weird one. Um, and if you need to do a bunch of damage to the mirror to break it. So a Devil Trigger explosion or a fully charged release will do that. Um, and the enemies don't take any damage, and they can just wail on you until you figure that out. And in this room, there is a big... Uh, what is this thing called again? Hourglass. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, if it if it runs out, all the enemies respawn and you spawn at the back at the beginning of the room. But you know, it's a speed run. That won't happen, right? Sure. Interestingly enough, a lot of the enemies early on, obviously not those, but they'll disintegrate into sand, mm -hmm. made of sand. But those ones like boil away into blood. Yeah. Interesting. So I kind of messed up a little bit there. I accidentally used my release, but it should be fine. I grabbed some extra money just in case. Um, this is where we're going to spend all the rest of our money buying Holy Waters because we're going to fight Arkham now. Mm -hmm. And Arkham is not a fun fight at all. So we're just going to use items to kill him because why would you fight him? Yeah. But we're I need to do a little work, bit of damage. At the we're here to work smarter, not harder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this also has a really cool boss theme. Too bad the boss fight sucks. It's got some really cool narrative stuff going on, though. Um, yeah, this is mostly a story 
like a story-driven fight, as we'll see in a moment. Yeah, hence Virgil yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, so halfway through the fight, Virgil's going to be like, hey, I want to fight too. Hey, I don't like this guy either. Yeah. Brother, um, let's join up. <laughs> hey, brother. But the unfortunate <laughs> yeah, part brother. is you can't use your devil trigger or your style while you're fighting with Virgil. So all of your main DPS is taken away from you. <laughs> and Virgil just stood there. <laughs> which, is why, uh, which is why we use Holy Waters, because otherwise it's really, really slow. And that's the part where you can blow uh, your second controller. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've got mm -hmm. the second controller, and that cutscene has the iconic Dante Virgil jackpot. Mm -hmm. And this is and the final boss of the this game. This is it. Virgil 3. Virgil 3. Get good 3. Mm hmm. I can't see camera, please. Ooh. Uh oh. I'll just block. Oh, never mind. Uh. <laughs> I'll just block everything. It's fine. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Right. This fight's hard. Okay, so basically this works the same way as Virgil 2, except his HP that you need him to get to is way too way lower. I'm just gonna like jump on his head over and over again, there we go. like it's Mario, um, and hopefully get him to like about 40% HP, which is where the point where he uh, will go into Devil Trigger. But I don't want to go below that because then he'll get devil trigger and I'm like totally nothing I can do. So right about there? Yeah, right here. So I need to kill him on this stun. Like that. Which you did. Ooh, that was beautiful. Very that's, well that's done. Time. Is that time? That's yeah. time. Awesome. Yeah. This game is great. Mm -hmm. It's a great game, great speed game. Um, def definitely uh, you should check it out. This is an amazing tutorial by C. Mateo. Shout out to him. Basically, he taught me the run. Um, Are we going to kill the 100 enemies? <laughs> the extra cuts in? Oh, uh, no. We shouldn't. <laughs> it's a speedrunning event, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to go fast. But it's intense. There's a count. But, uh, yeah. Th thanks, to everyone, for having me. Uh, thanks for everyone that supports me. Thanks, you guys, for being on the couch. Thank you for having us. Check these guys out. Amazing streamers, runners. Check myself out. Twitch.tv forward slash waifu. There's a there's an underscore on the name on the on the screen waifu underscore yeah it's just it's, waifu it's just waifu it's just, just waifu. to make waifu. that clear I got the best name on Twitch not bragging uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah thanks for having yeah me. round of applause for waifu. yeah awesome job on that run waifu. Uh, interesting fact, I actually did watch all the cutscenes on the plane ride over here, and they are incredible. So yeah, definitely watch those cutscenes. Uh, anyway, we are at $4,200 for our bonus game, Super Ryu World 2, 100%. Um, that would be a run by Ryu Car. We have $50 from TMSLFT, who says, The Devil May Cry, it's -a me, Mario! We have $5 from Doku. I've never heard about that bonus game, so help me find out what it is. You know what? You and me both, Doku. I actually have no idea what Super Mario World 2 is, but all I know is I want to see it. So yeah, get all your donations in for Super Mario World 2. We have a $50 donation from Danieta. No comment on that one, uh, so I guess I'll just mention Super Mario World 2 again. Now, I know there's probably one person out there somewhere, maybe two of you, maybe actually a lot of you by this point, who uh, might be a little tired of me mentioning Super Mario World 2. Um, here's a hint, get your donations in for it. Because, I mean, if we meet that incentive, there's no reason for me to plug it, and I'll just get to more donations. So yeah, get your donations in for Super Mario World 2, even if you don't care. We appreciate all donations, big ones, small ones, ones with a comment, ones without. They're all great. I love donations. We have $25 from Zoocat. Hey there, greetings from Germ, actually from Switzerland. Glad to see such a great event with great runners and awesome staff. Want to see more Mario? Let's go, people. And now we are going to have a segment over at the prizes area. So let's head over there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Games Done Quick Express 2019. My name is Sent, uh, and as mentioned, hey, I'm here to show you guys some awesome prizes you can win uh, from now until a little bit later tonight. 
Uh, so first off, from our good friends over at Fangamer, we have this absolutely beautiful Crypt of the Necrodancer uh, blacklight poster. This thing looks great, and presumably it glows really nicely if you have a blacklight. Unfortunately, we only have really bright lights here, so not really getting the effect. But still, the design is absolutely amazing. It's from our friends over at Fangamer, and it is a $10 minimum donation. Uh, so hey, make sure to get those donations in. And get those donations in to get us our first bonus game on the schedule, Super Riot World. That's going to be super cool. Uh, from our friends over at Studio Pen Pen, we have this absolutely beautiful top secret area mouse pad from Super Mario World. Uh, I'm holding it upside down, uh, but that's, uh, you know, it's on brand for me, frankly. Look, it's, it's got everything you need in the top secret area. You got a Yoshi, you got some feathers. Uh, it's a mouse pad. You can put a mouse on it. $5 minimum donation. You definitely want to get your donations in for that. Now, from our friend, uh, the Chain Nerd, we have a couple of really beautiful uh, chainmail dice bags, and each of them is adorned with a little Triforce insignia on it. Uh, it comes in pink and gray, red and black, and uh, green and gold. And these things are super functional. You know, you can hold your dice in there. You can hold whatever. Look, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you right off the top of my head. You can hold some dice in there. Now, some of you are wondering, that's not uh, a die. That is a Game Boy Advance cartridge. And to you, I say, mm, it works fine. Like, come on, there you go. Now you're, you're good to go. You got Sonic Advance in a dice bag. Don't ask why I have a copy of Sonic Advance on me. $20 minimum donation, you get the set of all three of them. Uh, they look great. Uh, huge shout outs to our friend, The Chain Nerd, for making that happen. Uh, guys, we have so many great prizes for you that are all available. Uh, you're going to want to head over to gamesdonequick.com and, of course, check out the tracker to find out more about them. Uh, of course, we have the two prizes that are running throughout our entire event uh, for a $30 minimum donation. You can get yourself in on a chance to win uh, a custom banner done by our in-house artist, LLK. It's absolutely beautiful, six feet long. You can see a great picture of it on the tracker, as well as our grand prize, which is a $50 minimum donation. It, don't, don't worry, it's not these bongos. You don't have to win these bongos because instead you can win... Uh, this wonderful Nintendo Switch that has been uh, customized to be themed after Spyro the Dragon. It's got a really great art skin on it. It comes to us by way of Activision. Huge shout outs to Activision for making it happen. It's a $50 minimum donation throughout the entire marathon. So, hey, maybe get $50 in now. Get into to everything I just talked about, plus plenty of more stuff. We've got a couple of beautiful cross stitches from our friend Sarah Herbst. Uh, we have some lovely paintings from Axie. Uh, guys, head over to gamesdonequick.com, check out the tracker. It's going to have all the information you need, of course, on upcoming prizes, speedruns, and incentives that you can put those donations towards, like our first bonus game, Super Mario World. Uh, but that's going to be all for me. Let's throw it back to the front as we get ready for Super Mario World, the regular kind, with Mistaken. Thanks, Sent. Those prizes certainly did look amazing. And if you are donating towards one of those prizes, you may be automatically entered to win one of those prizes, but your donation doesn't automatically go towards any incentives. So if you happen to donate for a prize, might I mention the Super Mario World 2 100%, which will be run supposedly after Super Mario World by Ryu Car, but only if you get your donations in? I will mention that. We have an anonymous $33 donation with no comment. Um, so I'm going to mention Super Mario World 2 100% again. We have $50 from Blake Eclipse. My first time being at a live event. It's awesome. Best of luck to the runners and thanks to all the staff. I have an anonymous $50 donation with no comment, so I'm gonna mention Super Rio World 2 100% again. We are at $4,400 for Super Mario World 2 100%, which will be run by Ryu Car after the Super Mario World run, but only if you get your donations in for that. GDQX is coming to you live from TwitchCon in San Diego, California, and all of your donations will be going directly towards supporting Able Gamers. 
There are millions of people with disabilities who can't play video games without expensive, specialized equipment. The Able Gamers charity helps gamers with disabilities by providing that equipment free of charge. Their mission is to create opportunities that enable play in order to combat social, social isolation, foster inclusive communities, and improve the quality of life for people with disabilities. I have an anonymous $15 donation as well as a $5 donation from Catherine 8 with no comment. So I'm going to mention Super Mario World 2 100% again, run by Ryu Carr after the Super Mario World run, but only if you get your donations and we meet that incentive. <sighs> We have $50 from Windslash. No comment. No, really. That's the comment. No comment. And because there's no comment, I'm going to mention that we passed the $4,500 mark for Super Mario World 2 100%, which will be run later by Ryu Car after Super Mario World, but only if we meet that $10,000 incentive. We have $50 from Vengans. You guys are the best. Keep up the good work. We have $50 from Lusco. Props to you guys for being awesome. Keep up the great runs and the great charity work. We have $20 from Hex Flareheart. Chainmail dice bags? As a tabletop gamer, that is a must have. Also, that DMC3 run was stylish, just as it should be. And we are going to take a quick ad break. So I will see you soon. David. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were going to tell me something. Welcome back to TwitchCon 2019. We are at GDQX. <laughs> Goodness, I messed that up. Anyway, we have a $25 donation from Urza MTG. I will be donating $5 for every swag thing that Mstocken does during the Lunar Dragon Run. Every item fly, perfect hallway cape, yump, crusher clip, extraneous block dupe, and so forth will go toward charity. Donut Plains 2 and Butterbridge 1 are going to empty my wallet, but it's so worth it. An extra $20 if Mistakin sings about Soda Lake. And we are good to go, so take it away, Mistakin. Hello, I just reset my console, so <laughs> I think we're on.